Hey everyone, welcome to this little bonus episode, episode 8 of Talk Nerdy With Me podcast. We are your hosts, Adam, Brittany, (laughs) (coughs) and we're talking about episode 4 of Falcon and the Winter Soldier today, and we're excited. I mean, we literally, we we knew that we were going to have to make just an episode for them. Yeah, there was a lot to unpack in this one. I just, as soon as it was over, we were like, okay, I guess we're going to hop back on. But this one's going to be quicker because it's one episode and we really just kind of wanted to like give you our thoughts. But I I mean, let's just jump. Let's dive in because literally episode five is currently out and we want to see it. (laughs) Yeah, no, it it came out um, an hour ago. An hour ago. And it's been pretty painful just having to sit, uh, you know, and not be watching it yet. He means it's pretty painful that it took me this long to get our setup ready. Yeah, but our wonderful technician figured out how we can uh, use both microphones the right way. So we apologize for any poorly sounding yeah. audio in the last one, but I think we figured it out for this one. Maybe. And last week definitely was, um, I mean, it took longer to come out. Like we made it days ago, but yeah. because we were figuring out some neat audio things, like it was a time, but that's not what this episode's about. <laughs> yeah. So episode four, the world is watching and what a perfect title. Mm. Um, it's funny because there's a delay with the title. So if you do watch it at midnight, it usually just says episode, whatever it is. Um, and then just a very standard, this is the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, uh, going on an adventure or something like that. Yeah. And, uh, after the fact, usually when you finish is when the title finally appears and to see the title after the fact, you're just like, wow, what, what a fitting. It was super fitting. Like yeah. it was just, it was, it was the perfect, I mean, not only like implication for like what's going to happen with the rest of like, I mean, the Marvel universe, not even just this series, but like just something that they should have thought of beforehand. Like mm-hmm. they, they should have thought of this. They should have known. You're celebrities, basically. They've they've gone over this in Avengers before, how the Avengers are more celebrities than anything else. Like in some like funny ways where like Thor in Ragnarok, he like cheeses for oh, a yeah. selfie. Hulk does the same thing when he's diner. like exactly. And like there have been times where like they've actually more seriously talked about it. Kind of like Iron Man, I think, had similar situations where the world is freaking watching you he was already a celebrity to be fair yeah but yeah i think the biggest like kind of reference to this episode though would be um episode three where um zemo was saying he's like we can't put these super soldiers but these superheroes in general on this pedestal because even though they are heroes in some ways they do have their flaws and the flaw unfortunately go a lot further than a lot of the success and in this episode at the end is exactly what we see it's like yes and a lot of people's eyes this is the new captain america but the new captain america has just done the complete opposite of what the symbol stands for on what ends up being a world stage um just because of how you know uh media and videos are spread these days so yeah well it's even interesting to think like to be fair like that's kind of how they started like steve rogers campaign was like him being more of a celebrity for Mm -hmm. the u.s than an actual soldier yeah and it's very it's flipped on its head for this episode you know like you pointed it out to me when we were rewatching it, how like during the entire episode, you see people like pulling out their phones and like kind of taking pictures of the new Captain America because he he is a headliner. He is a celebrity. They're going to be taking pictures. They're going to be interested. They're going to be watching everything he does. He has he's signed away his like rights to privacy in a way. And he didn't think that through when he lost it. Yeah. Well, even in that sense, like Captain America was almost solely made um like one for obviously for the war right. but in that case he was also used as like an uncle sam propaganda type of thing exactly so yeah. it just it went hand in hand and made sense at the time well but like as even, time goes on it just gets recreated in different ways and well, like even how um in episode one of falcon and the winter soldier you see like the propaganda style like very uncle sam captain america is back posters yeah. like it's they they tried yeah. they just didn't choose the right guy like, there was actually a part um, where Carly is talking to her friend Nico, I believe is his name, the one that, you know, dies in the end. Uh, he is talking about Captain America and how he hadn't thought of one that would fit the role as well as Steve Rogers until he met her. And the thing he said, it was really uh, telling. I want to find it because it was such a good quote and it really made me think about how, like, even the way he's describing it, yeah, he's a little bit of an extremist, but, like, they should have picked Sam. Like, even in the way he was ex- explaining it. 
Yeah, this one's going to be kind of scattered just because a lot of the points will reference, you know, different parts of the episode. Um, so try to keep it as organized as possible. But again, there's just so much to talk about in this one. He basically says Captain America is supposed to be one of the people. Like, he's supposed to represent the people. He's supposed to look like us. He's supposed to feel like us and been through the struggles like us. Um, and you're that person, basically, along those lines. And it was just, like, such a telling quote because, I mean, even though he's, like, saying it to Carly, who's definitely an extremist... It's really embodying the fact that the person they chose isn't someone that's like the people. He didn't go through the same struggles as like the people went through. Like they're not looking up to someone and being like, hey, I relate to you the way that they did with Steve Rogers. Instead, they're like, oh, he's a soldier dude that's supposed to help us. Like they don't have any like relation to him. And then it becomes so much more obvious when he goes off the deep end, you know, like that's it's just not something he was already unrelatable and then it, he just took the whole turn. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think it's funny how interesting it is that uh, Carly is just so anti the shield. You know what I mean? Because the shield oh, yeah. hasn't done much to her. It's funny too thinking saying, about like, like this symbol again, because it is a symbol. The symbol is what's causing a lot of these issues. And it's like the shield hasn't really done. It's even funny thinking about like you. shield itself and how it had to be taken down by hydra and wasn't recreated because of the symbol behind shield like especially Mm. watching agents of shield how much colson says that but But, yeah it's just funny how like anti-captain america she is because obviously now he's getting um you know involved with the situation but before it sounds like it's been a long term it sounds like she was never like really into captain america but i mean even like when you think about how when they go up to john walker in this episode they want his autograph you know what i mean Mm -hmm. like they're asking him to sign something. When did you ever see that happen to Steve Rogers? You know, like everyone kind of just treated him like a normal dude because yeah. he always kind of like embodied that. Well, John Walker's more of like a celebrity. Yeah. He's getting a big head. Yeah. Um, I do want to point out how, uh, again, sketchy Sharon is. Um, I assume dude, we're going to yeah. find out in this episode whether or not she is the power broker, unless it's someone completely random. I just, I can't see who else it would be. And the biggest thing I noticed was in this episode when uh, Sam calls her and he's asking for another favor, um, she, it is to look up uh, John Walker. And so uh, she's like, I'll use my satellite. You know what I mean? And she's like, I have access to one or two satellites. It's like, who, who has access to one or two satellites, dude? No one. uh, So she ends up tracking John Walker for them, which ends up, uh, you know, leading to one of the fight scenes later in the show. Uh, But after this goes down, there's a point where Carly gets a text from the power broker and it says verbatim, you're on borrowed time. And that was an exact quote that Sharon used in episode three mm-hmm. to Bucky and Sam when they were leaving the uh, the shipment place after they met with the doctor guy. Mm-hmm. So uh, I, I thought that was a really interesting phrase to reuse, borrowed time. And I feel like with Marvel, they usually like little red herrings like that to kind of catch your attention and just completely throw you off. But I, I think it's one thing to keep in mind if she ends up being it. It's just a very clear you know, red flag right there. Definitely. It's one of those situations where it's like, it seems very coincidental that all of that went down in the way it did with Sharon also knowing Mm -hmm. like who Carly is, where she was like, it just seems, I don't know. Like obviously at the end of the day, the power broker definitely isn't the person that killed Battlestar, but I don't know. It just, it's interesting to see if like there is some kind of like deeper play going on with Sharon, with the power broker, with the media even like, having like that whole big brother like eyes in the last episode where it says like he's always yeah he's always watching and it literally it was it was it was definitely reminiscent of big brother which Mm -hmm. is someone that completely controls media and controls life and the government and the government well yeah big brother is the government in in that but like it would just be interesting to see if like somehow the power (laughs) broker does have a lot more access to social media than we're aware of yeah i mean well in that case they're literally like the king of madripoor like uh well yeah but madripoor is a city you yeah know what but I mean? zemo mentioned he's like the judge jury and executioner meaning any power there is to have in this place he has it totally so yeah no no very very mobster like yeah. very mafia like kind of situation yeah that's what it felt like anyways i saw one person just again with speculation and what if it's this person they're like what if it's the kingpin uh, who's a big, you know, Spider-Man villain, but he's your typical mobster. He was the big giant guy in uh, Into the Spider-Verse. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and it's funny because uh, the Kingpin, you know, that introduces Spider-Man, it introduces Daredevil, but it's like, it's a very easy guy to just throw in because it's just your, you know, run of the massive, mill. you know, yeah, 
gangster. You know what I mean? That's really all. He I don't feel like he would be, though, just because, like, again, he's a Spider-Man villain, so he's probably normally in Brooklyn. Yeah, no, he should be. But Yeah. One of the biggest parts of this episode was John Walker finally getting a chance to take the, the uh, Super Soldier Serum. And yeah, um, you can definitely that. see, like, as soon as he notices it there, he takes it. Like, obviously, I feel like most people would I don't think, it. well, I mean, he stole it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but from there, you can see the hesitation with actually taking it or not. I mean, I just thought it was really impressed. I mean, okay, we're kind of skipping over the whole, like, Zemo part in the beginning, which I thought was really funny, of, like, how he gets the information from the kids, and, like, this is my my colleague, you Oh, know? yeah, no, I thought but it was like, funny, but not really, like... No, 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 it's, it, but, like, that was, it was definitely Don't just, take like, candy from a Zemo. <laughs> don't take a turkey. Okay, it was honestly Turkish funny. Delights... <sighs> I still don't, I will yeah. never be on that wave, but like, whatever. Um, but Zemo himself, having that moment where like, he is alone with the super serum, with all of the super serum left, he shot Carly. It was all like, very intense. And then you just see him staring at it and you're like, thinking the worst, but like, he really sticks by his guns and he starts smashing them with his boots, which isn't something that many people can do. It was impressive. Like, I, I yeah. mean, for a second, you're like, is he going to take it? And just, you know. Mess hypocrite. everything up. Yeah. Well, not even that. Just be like hypocritical of basically his mission. I didn't for think the that he would take movies. it, like as in like actually ingest it. I thought that he was going to like use it as leverage in a way. Mm. You know what I mean? Like I was take just it impressed by how quickly possession. he decided to smash everything. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess we shouldn't be because that's that's quite literally like his character. He's yeah. supposed to hate the idea of super soldiers. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, and so like seeing him smash it all, it was really impressive. And then freaking John Walker's like, what are you? And punches him. And you think him, uses the shield and oh, knocks him out. Punches him with the shield. Better. We love using the shield as a weapon, right? Um, but rings. isn't that ironic? A shield's supposed to be like a defensive weapon, but like the way he uses it is 1000% offensive. Anyways, um, he, we think that like we're safe and you just see that one bottle of, of super serum and it's just like, damn, this is going to happen right now. And I was actually surprised. He didn't take it right away. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he pocketed it, but he didn't take it. Yeah. And I think that, like, we gaining the backstory when he's talking to Battlestar later, like, Lamar. getting, yeah, Lamar, getting a little bit more just information on, like, what they were, it clarified so much for me. Yeah. Like. I mean, I honestly, I did respect that he hesitated to take, like, obviously, any yeah. person would want to. I would take that in a heartbeat. You know what I mean? It's like, what do you have to lose? Um, but. Nothing to lose, yeah, everything to, to gain. Uh, but having the conversation with Lamar was really grounding him because, what he essentially told me was just like the super soldier serum it gives you you know that extra strength but it really just makes you more of you so a steve yeah. rogers who is a you know an amazing good-hearted person is now a super strong good-hearted person well he was like the he turned into an even better person yeah, like his then, morals were strengthened just yeah. like how the red skulls evil came out much stronger yeah and the same thing with carly carly probably had these ideas and desires before right. this and now she's obviously a more extreme version but she's still her and what Lamar is telling him, he's like, dude, it was really cool to actually see how close they are as friends. I feel yeah. like this was the most, like, in-depth conversation, like, emotion-wise well, we've gotten between the two of them. For a long time, we were under the assumption, I think even from the way that Falcon was talking to them, that they were paired together. Mm -hmm. You know, like, because, I mean... Well, no, they were definitely war well, no, buddies, but... Well, but the, even the way that they bring it up in the first episode, they're like, really? Mm -hmm. Really? Because, like, I didn't take the really as, like, oh, that's his sidekick. Mm -hmm. I took it more as, like, oh, you're trying to carbon copy steve rogers and sam mm -hmm. like literally having very white blonde hair blue eye captain america and then a cool like sidekick that has a cool name and all this kind of stuff and to see them having been like actually like best friends to see him being a grounding support to john walker i wish we would have gotten more of it yeah. and i think uh, one of the biggest uh parts about their conversation that really stood out to me was actually the last thing that he said when he was talking about all the medals that they received from Afghanistan and John Walker says those medals were almost like a participation trophy to make us feel better about the horrible things we did the way and I yeah the way I took it was more of like be quiet like this is this yeah. is shut up money mm -hmm. you know what I mean like and that's how he that's what John Walker was pretty much saying about it because he mm -hmm. goes on to say I got these medals to remember the worst day of my life and he really is saying that being Captain America is the first time he feels like he's doing something right. And it really tiptoes this line because it's like, even though we don't like him, feeling that human side of him wanting to do good yeah. makes me want to, you know, be on his side for a little bit. You know what I mean? And then I, after that, yeah. it goes right into, again, they're talking about Afghanistan. And Lamar, he goes, can you imagine all the people we would have saved if we had serum back then? 
and that is the last thing that he says and you see john walker just kind of like nodding his head he's like Like, yeah because he didn't tell lamar that he had the serum which i Mm -hmm. thought was a little odd like i would tell my best friend like if i hadn't taken it yet i would be sitting there i'd be like well circumstantially (laughs) it's like you feel like that's kind of uh not a scarlet letter but it's like you not you shouldn't have that you know what i mean that's sure that's like something that that goes against the entire but mission I th- right now. I think so. that, like the entire idea behind like having that best friend that is rooting for you, yeah. that's like sitting there, that's like he's basically saying he doesn't even know if he's a good person. Mm-hmm. And he's saying and his Lamar is saying, No, you make the right decisions under pressure. Like you've always like tried to do good. Like yeah. you are the right person for this job. And having like him reaffirm that and if they were like truly best friends, I mean, in my opinion, him even saying, like, if we'd only had the super serum then, the only reason in my head that he wouldn't have told Lamar about it is because he would have been worried that Lamar would have wanted it or like to yeah. split it in some because like Lamar never would have been like got to turn that in yeah like he doesn't true. seem like the kind you know he's like he's there for John mm-hmm. not for the government right. you know so like I think that that was maybe a little bit odd maybe showing a little bit of that selfishness that he might have in him but yeah i really think that whole scene was crucial for the episode and honestly crucial for the story arc i i didn't see lamar's death coming at all like i mean i probably should have i'm actually kind of surprised oh i I saw it i saw it coming the moment he was the way that it happened was just so abrupt it was probably the most like the term that a lot of people use is grounded kind of death because you wonder why you don't really see more of those kinds of deaths in the marvel universe not saying that every you know person getting thrown into a wall should break a neck but when dealing with super soldiers 90 percent of the time they're like gonna this, be really like, injured all those times black widow got thrown up against a, a wall or a tree like that's that's getting, a bad injury, getting you know thrown I mean? up against anything from like you, you see 10 feet yeah. being thrown that's gonna hurt yeah you know like you're gonna break something more than likely well i was even telling her like having captain america whether it be Steve Rogers or <laughs> yeah. John Walker, throw a shield at you full strength that's vibranium should probably break your spine. I don't know the exact dimension. When they but do like, like the boomeranging thing, yeah. Yeah, so for, I mean, for them to just get knocked over, that's fine. But it, this felt like the most like, just authentic. like authentic kind of death. Because it's like as terrible as it was, it was just like, that's we're human. We break easily. You know what I mean? Yeah. So in combat, especially, you know, one bad landing that's not against a super far soldier off, that was like that alone caught me off guard because that was probably one of the more graphic kinds of deaths we've seen it was you heard uh, all of the noise yeah, you know like it was it was it, just one of those but... situations like i've seen this kind of death before like whether i've read it or i've seen it in other like movies and it's every single time it's very startling because yeah. like it's it's something that wasn't supposed to happen you know that the intention behind it wasn't what happened you know like she wasn't trying to kill him yeah but ultimately this is going to be a turning point in the story this is going to be a a situation where it doesn't matter to john that his best friend wasn't purposefully killed in his head manslaughter is manslaughter and you're going the hell down for it yeah um it was just like i love it i was telling him that the way that the sound goes out that's one of my favorite techniques like in thrillers or shell shock kind of thing yeah the, the, the moment of shock like because when you're in shock your ears feel like they kind of like get like sucked in like you can't hear everything everything's a little bit ringing like mm-hmm. so seeing that music intensify and like suddenly you can't hear any of the screaming happening until he breaks through the window it was just so well done yeah it was intense for sure yeah and then obviously this goes right into the next scene which was the biggest part of the entire episode um where john walker chases down it's not even the guy who ended up killing Lamar because that was Carly. It was um, what's Nico. His name? Nico, who was the one we mentioned earlier, who was saying how he looked up to Captain America when he yeah. was a kid. And so he chases him down. Um, you and know, him just even saying, it wasn't me, it wasn't me. Yeah, and uh, he gets him into what looks like this, you know, uh, town Statue. square kind of area, which is the middle of, it just looks like the center of the city. And it knocks him over and just shield up multiple times breaks his sternum over again and pretty much executes him in public and one thousand percent this is the main reason for the title the world is watching because they really put you know uh, a Emphasis. modern day spin on it because as this is happening all the tourists and people in this area are all pulling out their phones and recording it um just as you know all things happen these bystanders days. Yeah. like literally they're just like what's going on they and like no one i think initially no one is showing that like sign of like disgust you know Mm -hmm. like they're all just like confused they're like oh this must be for a reason but they're all still taking videos and like then at the end you see their shock settle in Mm -hmm. because 
you see like the blood start to splatter on like the the statue on like the hand when it falls like you know that it's it's cutting in to like his chest and it was super reminiscent like i told you of when steve rogers gets iron man in civil war Mm -hmm. like and he's about to like he's he gets on that edge of like i'm almost about to kill you and then instead he breaks his uh arc reactor arc reactor for the suit that way like he can't move and he throws his shield because he knows like he's not worthy Worthy. of it yeah no i think that's definitely a deeper layer to this because it felt like a one-to-one kind of um, oh comparison mirror of Mm -hmm. the situation steve rogers being the bigger person is like no this person's my friend i can't kill him and then on the other end this is what's tough is honestly anybody in john walker's situation probably would have done i'm not saying like a public execution but you know what I mean? a lot of in people moment, want revenge you're going to be looking for revenge so like i can't act like he's the only person who would have done that um but with the symbol especially going out into the middle of a street with like the that, shield you have to understand the ramifications of your actions and how it reflects no, on in this case the united states because he's think, captain america i think that the bigger like issue i mean yeah every single person that's had something done bad to them has wanted in some way revenge yeah. you know what i mean like most people go towards that route I think the issue didn't come from wanting revenge. It was the way that he did it. Like, the brutality, like, how gruesome. He knew, like, you... After the first one, which, like, he could have survived that. He's a super soldier. You know, like, you know that this is going to kill someone. You know this isn't even the right person. Like, you... In the back of your head, most people will have a moment of clarity. You know? Like, Mm -hmm. and he doesn't even have that after he finishes. Like, he, he puts his shield back on, and he's just staring, like, no regrets, no feeling, no emotion, which yeah shock can do that but like he definitely looks like in the fight or flight kind of response but like he looks angry he just looks like still mad he's not like satisfied obviously it was just a very like shocking moment of his nature like where it turned because again lamar was his like his good angel on his shoulder you know what i mean like he was was he was his rock he was his moral compass and without him he's kind of turned completely and the way that i even saw it like i think i mentioned this to you the other duality kind of scene when Bucky dies, when Bucky was thrown out of the train car, not on purpose because they were trying to get to Captain America. And when he finally ultimately falls into the ice, Captain America has that moment of losing his best friend, his moral compass, his guide through everything because Bucky had been there for everything for him, you know, and he he doesn't lose it like that. And to be fair, he was a good, good person without Bucky, too. But he doesn't even kind of seek revenge. He just takes them in as prisoners, which is what you're supposed to do as a symbol, especially. I think the craziest thing was that this is actually, from what I remember, the first time we've seen blood on the shield, which is just Oh, no, totally. Um, It's it's fascinating because this is clearly used as a weapon multiple times. It's not literal defense. You know what I mean? The shield is on offense a lot of the time um, in these fights. And we've fought dudes like... Thanos, you know what I mean? I mean, I think um, that in and, general... And Steve Rogers, he, you know, he has killed people in the past. You know what I mean? Like, he was in the war. Right. But it's just funny because uh, it's almost something you wonder, did this just get okayed for this because of how graphic it was? Like, we've never seen a death like this. Well, really. what I was going to say is I don't in, uh, even think we've seen Marvel. blood on a weapon before. Not in really. Marvel. Like, on a weapon. Like, yes, we've seen it dripping down. Like, but we've never seen it in this nature where it's, like, actual, like, splatters happening. Like, like very, was... very, like crime scene yeah like you know these two deaths were probably the most graphic deaths and even like thanos's head getting yeah. cut off was just a clean cut you know what i mean there was nothing else to it in infinity or in an end game this head doesn't get cut off it does right in the beginning oh okay yeah yeah sorry yeah, I, well, like, I was thinking of the end i'm like the dusting <laughs> no uh, when he when his head gets cut off it's like a, just a clean cut you know what i mean oh yeah like they try to keep obviously the gore and stuff to a very minimum because children do watch this but i feel yeah. like in this specifically for the context too it really they made needed the it. situation that much more intense like having these kinds of deaths it just showed how so. like brutal it was yeah. and like to have t- when we saw that it was with the shield like i thought i can't i can't i, I can't flipped. explain how shocked we were at the end when we saw the blood on the shield like yeah. we literally weren't talking for yeah. a while because it's like I mean, the shield is supposed to be the symbol of Steve Rogers, of Captain America, who was so good, so pure, who only did bad things for, like, good. And he didn't even really do that many bad things, you know? Like, so to see it used in a completely different nature, because the government forced it that way, because Sam thought he was turning it into the museum, and just to, like, have it all, like, kind of 
coalesce into that moment was so upsetting. Like this is this was the government's doing at the end of the day. He was the wrong person for the job. And it was so obvious in that moment. And who knows what implications that's going to have for like the American government in Marvel in the coming episodes. But there's going to be some and they're going to finally know that they messed up. Yeah, well, I think my obviously we're going to be watching the episode here in just a moment. But my biggest right. question is how they handle it and do they take it away from him? And I don't going back to Civil War, when Steve Rogers, you know, leaves the shield, um, it was because Tony says... My, my dad, my dad made my father that. made that. He's like, you don't deserve it. You don't deserve it. And he was like, you're right. I don't deserve it. In this case, we're probably going to see the opposite where they're just like, hey, you got to give this back. And he's like, no, it's mine. You I know see him I mean? turning into a vigilante. I feel like he'll know that he did wrong, that the government isn't yeah. going to be on his side. And mm-hmm. I see him completely separating. Like, I don't yeah. think he's well, going to go back. Well, it's funny you mention that because that's kind of his exact story in the comics is where he, oh, is uh, it? yeah, he gets the name US agent is what he goes by. It's essentially a vigilante. A vigilante or villain, I th- think he kind of goes both ways depending on the storyline, but it's a guy who was, you know, trying to be the Captain America um, and then just just keeps falling from grace for whatever reason. So, but it's like yeah, a, if he gets the name strange... US agent, that's a direct callback to the comics. It's a very strange, like, anti-hero because he's not a hero. He's like, he's the opposite. He's an anti-villain. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Because he's like... Th- he's trying to be a hero. No, like... I know, but I mean, like... He, anti-heroes aren't supposed to they're oh, not yeah, trying yeah. to be heroes you yeah, know what i mean yeah. they're just kind of falling into that line for him he's trying to be a hero but he keeps falling on the side of villainy he doesn't want to be a villain <laughs> but it's just like i don't know it's just this this episode clarified so much mm-hmm. in like all the wrong ways because like you still see i think bucky finally said that if if like sam isn't going to go for it he's going to get the shield like, he had that moment where he was like, I'm going to get it back. Yeah. And I think it's going to be a very, like, upsetting moment. I think you've mentioned it to me that you think that the shield's going to be broken by the end. Mm-hmm. And I think it'll have to be. Yeah. I mean, the like, after that, there's no comeback. You can't ever see that shield and think, Steve Rogers, again, you're going to think, oh, yeah, that literally chopped a guy in half. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I saw the video on Snapchat. Like, no, that's that's so messed up. Yeah. Yeah, I, I do think it's going to get broken or if not literally broken, um, you know, create like morphed into something else for Bucky and uh, Sam to use. Um, yeah. I don't know who it would be. I but... think it would be sweet if they split the mantle somehow. Yeah. Like, I mean, I just like I think it would be nice, but I just I just don't I don't know how it's going to have a comeback. I don't know what's going to happen. Like, I don't even know how Carly's going to react. Like that was kind of like her her boyfriend kind of, you know, like, I don't know, at least her best friend. Like mm-hmm. he was the getaway car. He was the guy that she would always like talk to yeah. and um, it was her i mean her fault obviously yeah i mean so yeah that could be a very big turning point for her as well like i feel yeah. like their stories are very together in different ways you know yeah. but oh just to mention because we didn't talk about the line that nico mentions his grandfather because carly's saying how she's like scared and he says that his grandfather which is actually the grave that they're at taking mm-hmm. the medicine from said that if you're scared then it must be worth doing and then he mentioned how his grandfather must have been right because he was definitely fi- fighting Nazis yeah. in World War II. And I just thought it was an interesting thing to mention. I said this to you. You said it probably doesn't have to do with anything. It probably doesn't. But, like, that is the timeline that, like, Captain America was around and Bucky was around. And it would just be interesting if this is someone that somehow had to do with both of their stories in the end. Yeah. I think it would be, I just, with how much time's left, that's why I feel like it's kind of hard to bring in totally. someone's ancestry. But I could definitely <laughs> see, like, a flashback scene where his dad was directly fight, or you know, someone in his family yeah. was directly fighting next to Steve Rogers, or being saved by him, and that's what kind of led Captain yeah. America to be a symbol. But what I felt like that whole scene was was really just to elude this guy did look up to Captain yeah. America as a child, and he was and to, for basically that, murdered for, by the new Captain America. Yeah, for Captain America be the one to kill you after looking up to him as a child, it's just it makes everything just so much darker. Well, even though you know that's not the same Captain America. This yeah. isn't the one that he, he idolized. But it's the shield. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like, to be killed by the symbol that yeah. you loved. That's just... And to so. even like, ugh, it was just so unfair. He didn't do anything wrong. Uh, I, no, he didn't. Like He's still part of the group. Like, I mean, don't get okay, me wrong. He, was, he was implicit. Yeah. That's for sure. But like he... He didn't deserve execution, but he is still well, part of the problem. He never like... no Like Carly, when she blew up that building, like he was even like, there was people in there. Like he yeah. didn't want people to die. Like yeah. ever. He never wanted that. But like, yeah. you know, Carly's a very strong personality. Right. He was kind of going along with it. Yeah. And I mean, at the end of the day, yeah, okay, he didn't stop her, but yeah. he really didn't want that for the world either. He yeah. just wanted things to be better, and instead, you were killed 
Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. Like, he didn't obviously deserve it, but at the same time, when you're associated, that's, you know, it No, sucks, I mean, I don't even think Carly would have deserved a death like that. Like, I don't think no anyone deserved, deserves no a death like that. No death like that, but <laughs> yeah. they are labeled a terrorist organization. For sure, You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, at but the very least, seemed, he should have at least been arrested and brought in, but... He also almost seemed, like, hesitant. Carly's voice of reason. Mm-hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, it's interesting how much, like, their stories are, like... Um, what's that like mirroring each other because mm-hmm. like her best friend her voice of reason the person she talks to when she's nervous dies kind of like sam gets or, sorry, no, not, not sam. gets murdered um, like Lamar, brutally yeah. murdered and his voice of reason was accidentally killed yeah. like it's just interesting to see where both of their storylines are gonna go like yeah. is this gonna make her a good person and him a bad person no they're both gonna are they both crazy. gonna get way worse <laughs> is sharon the power broker we have questions yeah well, that's pretty much all i got i'm dying to watch this episode Oh, I really, the only thing, the last thing that I want to mention is just the beginning, like seeing Bucky. Yeah. Just, that beginning honestly had me like, I was in the feels. I, no, I was like, I that mean. That was so intense. For like a, a so scene where gosh. nothing's really happening, um, this is where I was reciting the words that usually make Bucky turn into the Winter Soldier and be controlled. Um, for her to recite them all and him finally be free. But he's just... so, he's saying the whole time, he's like, it's not going to work. It's yeah. not going to work. Like, it's not going to work. And he has no faith in himself. And then when it finally gets there and she tells him, like, you're free, like, you did it. And he's just crying. And it was just like, it was such an emotional scene. Like, to see that side of Bucky, obviously, we know Bucky's not a total hard ass like he pretends to be. But to, like, see him completely break in that way, the, like, showing that, like, just he's... Be vulnerable. I mean, he's just, like, he has, like, a hard shell, but he's really just soft inside and broken because he was literally, like, kept in cryosleep until they needed him for murder for so many years, you know? Like, it was just really good to see that. But it also shows how much he owes Wakanda. Yeah, I think that's kind of, you know, the the two sides of that is, like, one, you know, how much that meant to him, but at the same time, how much he owes to them because of it. I mean, it's even, like, when she, when they're having that fight to mm-hmm. get Zemo, and she, like, breaks off his arm, yeah. you know? And he just looks at her with so much hurt. Like, not even, like, shock, really, but, like, just hurt. Like, because she knows, like, what a what a boundary that would be to cross. Yeah. You know? And, like, he accepts it. He knows that he's messed up. But I think that even though he did mess up, I think Wakanda, at the end of the day, isn't going to, like, hold it against him. Well... Hopefully. I I mean, here's hoping. He's just trying to be the White Wolf, which is the name they gave him anyways, and no one's calling him that. (laughs) He literally does not want to fight anymore, and he just keeps ending up back in place. Okay, no, he doesn't not want to fight anymore. Even when he was trying to go under therapy and saying that he won't hurt anybody, he was still trying to get his, like, revenge stories for all the people that messed him up. But, no, I did want to just briefly touch on that, because that, you go from every emotion in this story. Like, you start sad, then Carly's sad, everyone's sad. And then it gets worse, and now you're just in shock and sad. Yeah. <laughs> it was crazy, and apparently this episode's supposed to be even crazier, so we'll see. Maybe we'll He's do literally one trying to this. wrap this up. He's like, Brittany, stop talking. I want to watch it. <laughs> yeah, it's... What time is it? It's 1.43, so it must have had to be two hours with all spoilers out there in the universe. Oh my gosh, just don't go on Twitter. Look, I can see it. Can you see it? It's right over there. I can see the it. The episode's called Truth. Oh, you can... You can see that part? Uh-huh. Impressive. Truth. Oh, so I'm assuming it's going to have something to do with uh, the media. No, it says the government has, or uh, he's got to pay for his actions or something like that. Yeah, so the truth. It's going to come out. Uh, ooh, maybe what happened in, because they don't mention it. They just say that something really bad happened overseas in Iraq. That he, he like, you would assume that it has to do with some kind of, like, murder that, probably got swept under the rug with those medals of honor oh i see what you're saying and so maybe the truth is going to come out of what happened there and why it is that he reacted in this way like yeah you were a great soldier but maybe in much too brutal of a way a brutal soldier should not be the one in charge should be one with a level head on his shoulders maybe they should have made Battlestar the soldier just saying but yeah i mean we'll talk a lot more i feel like after episode five we might end up doing another podcast not tonight but just for just that one that's gonna be it this was a very gruesome podcast uh sorry about that i guess we should have probably given a trigger warning for a lot of like gruesome talk but it's the end now so trigger warning for that um (laughs) that's gonna be it for this week expect probably in episode five but for the meantime please stand by
That way, if we say anything, it can be in good quality, unlike the last time. Mm-hmm.